So I'm going to go ahead and start recording and welcome everybody to the team call. I am super excited to have Tanya Landis on here with us today. Um, as you saw on our team page, she I believe is nine star. Is that right? From the last announcement I saw nine star diamond two time elite coach and just an amazing, amazing woman and leader. I have to admit the first time I met her, I was, I'd only been a coach for a couple months and I was super intimidated. <laughs> um, not going to lie, like Tanya is this totally like bubbly, outgoing, like so much fun personality. And in high school and stuff, I was always like really shy. And those kind of girls like really intimidated me. But then throughout the weekend, like I got to know Tanya and then we actually drove back together and got to know her. And, you know, beyond that, like super fun, bubbly exterior, just this amazing woman with such an incredible heart and has built an incredible business um, with Beachbody. And so I am just really excited to have her on here today to share her story, um, how she's been successful, and then her takeaways from the leadership event that she was just on. So I'm just going to save um, announcements for later for the team page and all that so we can jump right in and hear from Tanya. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here, you guys. And um, I have been a coach. It'll be five years. Um, January 1st, I signed up after right after Christmas of December 2011. I was um, sitting in a dance class um, that my one of my daughters was taking. I'm a mother of three. I have a son who's 12 now, a daughter who's eight, and then my youngest daughter is six. And she just turned six yesterday. And um, so I started when they were one, three, what, uh, I can't remember. It's such a blur. Anyway, they were little um, and there were three of them. But anyway, I was sitting in the corner in a dance class um, and I was eating uh, Cheez-Its and drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper, my daily meal of the day. Um, because back then I fueled on caffeine, sugar, and junk. And this girl starts talking to me. And mind you guys, this dance class, like none of the parents, like there was like a, you know, like parents were talking to each other. I didn't know anybody. I just signed my daughter up for this class because she wanted to take dance. And I just found the first studio. And, and that's actually Jesse who started talking to me. And she just started asking me about how I was and was just, you know, sweet to me. And it had been a long time since I had talked to somebody or had actually like a friend that cared because I had, um, my husband and I had very successful business, had the American dream complete with a white picket fence, had this perfect little boy. And then in 2008, the economy crashed. Our money was heavily invested in real estate. Um, we blew through our savings and at the same time I gave birth to my daughter, Allie, my second child, um, who was very, very, very sick. And for several years we didn't know if she was going to make it. So I went from up here to rock bottom. And then when we thought it was rock bottom with the financial, we had a daughter that we didn't know if was going to die. And, um, it was just a really awful time period. So for years, you know, for those years, um, we struggled, we lost everything, lost our home, lost all our rentals, we lost friends, because it's interesting when you um, go through something like that, especially having a sick child, um, people disappear, because they don't want to deal with the hard stuff. They don't want to be your friend when you've got hard stuff going on, um, which was a huge eye opener for me, because I had all these friends. But little did I know that when um, I needed support, you know, just, a, you know, somebody, I did have a couple, like, don't get me wrong, but I was pretty shocked at who kind of left us high and dry because we weren't fun anymore um, because we had some serious issues going on with our daughter and also finances. So um, my husband was working several hours a week to make ends meet because Allie's medical bills totaled that of a college education um, of a really nice school <laughs> because I basically would, um, call hospitals and doctors to see how much I owed and make payment arrangements and then try to pay just enough so I could keep taking her. Because that's another thing. Yes, you think insurance is great, but let me tell you, when you actually need to use it, they will find any loophole to get out of paying for things, which is what happened to us. And I had to fight 
constantly with them, which was exhausting. So um, here I am, pretty depressed, totally anxiety ridden, feeling on sugar and caffeine because of Allie's condition. She didn't sleep very well. Um, and my, I had a baby who also didn't care for sleep. And then during the day had to be up with a grade schooler. So my life was chaos. Um, definitely didn't look like I wanted help. Um, when I was shoving Cheetos and, you know, Cheez-Its in my face and drinking pop, but Jesse still talked to me anyways. And, um, and honestly, you guys, it had been, like I said, a long time since somebody asked me how I was and I, you know, here I was overweight and overwhelmed. So she talked to me about starting and I was like, that sounds awesome, but we are broke and we were broke. Um, we were on like assistance. We had to borrow money for, to get Allie's medications were after insurance, like five or 600 bucks a month. Um, and so basically all of our money went in that we had went in to pay for what she needed. Um, and like I said, I was trying to keep it so we could keep going to the different hospitals and doctors that she needed to see. So, um, I wanted something different though. I was miserable, like a just miserable. And I really wanted to, um, work on myself, but like going to the gym wasn't an option. And, um, I was already overwhelmed. I didn't have, like, I didn't have support because, um, I just didn't know where to start. I like really didn't know where to start. I didn't know what eating clean was. Like I had never been taught. Um, and so she just started talking to me and I, um, I was really interested and she followed up with me and kept following up with me. And then that was in like October. And then December, I took my Christmas money and my husband's Christmas money that we had gotten from family, pulled it together and bought a challenge pack. And I, that's where I say like, we can all afford what we want to afford and making that investment in myself. And, um, at that point, that was such a huge financial investment for us that I was determined not to give up. And I also signed up to be a discount coach because I knew, even though I was 40 pounds overweight and had horrible eating habits, that if I was accountable to other people, then I would stay accountable to myself. So I was not your picture perfect coach. Um, definitely not. I actually drank pop my entire first year of coaching. I didn't lie about it, but I did. And, um, and I was honest about it. It was like the last thing to give up. Um, I also drank quite a few coffees and had a nasty sugar habit, but here's the thing. I was trying and it was really by making little changes every day that compounded and you know, that's where the compound effect comes in. It wasn't about changing everything to be perfect. It was about making changes and wanting to get better and inviting other people to join me along the way because of that attitude. Um, I decided I would start, you know, January 1st, 2012 and, um, and that was, you know, I was that person that would write New Year's resolutions every year. And then like by January 10th, I was done with them. Um, but this time I was like, I'm going to succeed because I need to do this not only for me, but also for these kids. Like I need to be an example, especially for my daughters, um, because they're going to watch everything that I do. And I had watched my mom's unhealthy eating habits um, and I knew how to get skinny and I had been skinny, but I did it the wrong way. Um, the unhealthy way. And I did not want my kids, especially my girls to have body image issues. So I just um, decided, okay, we're going to do this. I put a post up on Facebook. I started inviting people. Um, I listened to what Jesse told me to do. I kept it super simple. And because of that, I went Emerald right away, um, hit success club, and I went diamond in 45 days. So here I am. Still 40 pounds overweight. I think I might have lost a couple pounds, but I felt so good from drinking Shakeology and I was pushing play on my workouts. Not every day. There was no 21 day fix back then. There was no 30 minute workouts. They were all like an hour and I did it. I actually started with insanity and I puked during my fit test, but I kept going. Um, and so that's what mattered. And then the next day I thought I was like dying, like laying on the floor. But anyway, it just, you know, never discount who you are or what your journey is and don't discount um, where someone else is because you never know who's going to make a coach. I didn't like working out. Um, I wasn't in love with it back then. Um, like I said, my diet was horrible. And um, 
but that's all different today. So that's how I started. I went diamond super fast. And the reason I went diamond is because honestly, I focused on the vital behaviors and that's what I still do today. So I focused on what, who I wanted to help, which was other moms like me who had no self-confidence, wanted to get better, but were just overwhelmed with our lives and our responsibilities. I love being a mom, but um, it was overwhelming to have three little kids and on top of that, a sick child. But even if you just take that out and have three kids, it's overwhelming. Um, I had come from a professional background. And so um, when I became a stay at home mom, it wasn't with one kid. It was with two kids. I had worked with my first child and then I was at home once I had my second because of her illness. And I was just, I didn't know how to be a successful housewife. Like it was, it was hard. And so this gave me like an outlet of something I could do and, um, not feel like a complete failure because to be honest at the time being a mom, I felt like a complete failure. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Like these kids are not sleeping. They're crying all the time. Um, I'm late all the time, like to get places. And so, you know, as a mom, it's great, but you, you do get overwhelmed and I just needed that outlet. Um, and so this was the perfect outlet and I loved the community that I had with other coaches and with my customers. My challenge groups were awesome. Um, you know, back then I had like three or four people, um, that were, you know, posting in there. It wasn't like I had a ton of people like I do today. And I think a lot of coaches think they have to have all of these people, but you don't. I've always been intentional about looking for who I'm supposed to help. So I'm very intentional with who I help and, um, you know, who I'm looking for. I look, you know, I look for that person that um, needs my help. And I don't just throw it up at the masses. Whenever I post on social media, whenever I do an invite, I'm very, very intentional. Um, I hold four diamonds right now myself three with three business centers um, and my husband and my diamonds are all very solid and my retention rate is very high and I firmly believe it's because I've always been intentional about who I'm going to help. Now I'll help people that come to me. You're going to get other people, but you need to be intentional and know who you're going to help. That's the first one. Um, my second point would be make sure you're doing your vitals and that's really what's important. They really drilled this in at leadership. So many people think they need to be having fancy websites, YouTube channels, all these things. Well, the number four coach um, in the entire company got up and spoke and his wife, who's number 14 was sitting next to me. They don't have a website and they don't, they have like five followers on YouTube and one's their son. So all that other fancy stuff like processes and the perfect system, they don't matter you have the system. It's called the vital behavior. So follow the vital behaviors, be a product of the product, do a workout. And this is straight from leadership. You guys, this is what I've had preached at me every single event I've gone to. And this is what I do. I'm a product of the product. I drink my shake. I do my workout. There's just no F ends or buts. Am I perfect? No, not always. Um, I had cake last night for my daughter's birthday, but I planned for it. Number two, um, make sure that you are doing your personal development. Your business grows in direct proportion with how much you grow. If you don't grow, your business won't grow. So that's really, really important to be doing personal development. I had to immerse myself in personal development. I am not the same person today that I was back then. Like Alicia said that I was, you know, she wasn't sure about me. Well, if she would have knew me back then, she would have had a very different reaction to me. Um, he was very different looking and very different person. I had no self-confidence and, um, number. So personal development and then number three, you need to be inviting people. Um, Carl Deichler showed this big, um, he talked about if you build it, they will come from field of dreams, right? So you have this big, beautiful, like baseball field. Well, here's the deal. If you don't invite anybody to come, you're just going to have this big, beautiful baseball field and nobody's going to be there with you. You just be standing there by yourself looking around. And that's not really what this business is about. We have this great thing that comes in a box called a challenge pack. It's got your workout. You've got your shake. You've got your support online from your coach. You got to invite people to have this. And that's what is so key in this business. So invite. And then number four 
is the recognition piece. You need to recognize your challengers, recognize your coaches, even for the small stuff. Like, um, you know, I have a girl who hates, um, you know, hates vegetables and she's drinking her shake and she's, you know, expanding her horizons and um, with some vegetables and she's eating like two different vegetables right now. That is a big deal for her. So I recognize her. Yeah, we have fun with it. Um, but I recognized her. We have, um, you know, I've got other coaches who are, you know, like they are scared to death to invite. So just them sending like 10 invites is a big deal. So I recognize that you got to be recognizing people for, um, you know, all sorts of things, not just success club and not just hitting a rank. It has to be so much more than that. Um, my team is great at recognizing our team culture is amazing and they'll recognize each other and they'll call out and be like, Oh, so-and-so did this amazing post today. I just want to give her credit. That's not their coach. That person has nothing to do with their business, but they're on their team and they recognize them. It's really important to have that, that vital behavior. Um, my third point would be be coachable. Um, it's not all about you. So many people are like, it's about me. Like, what about me? Or, oh, they're going to say no to me. So what? What if Jesse would have said that? I would still probably be in the same position that I am. And I wouldn't have helped. I've helped like 5,000 people, you guys. I would not have helped those people. And many of those people have helped other people. And what would have happened had she not had the guts to come over and talk to this girl who was pretty sad looking in a corner, eating Cheez-Its and drinking a Dr. Pepper, who just felt completely overwhelmed with life. What if she wouldn't? I didn't look like I was wanting help. I didn't look like a coach. Um, I look like a stressed out, overwhelmed, too busy, overworked mom. Um, and, you know, my responsibilities haven't changed. In fact, my responsibilities have increased since then, but I have like such a different demeanor. Um, so make sure that you're coachable and you reflect on your, you know, you reflect on who you are and how, you know, where you need to like, you know, get better really like and that's where you do the personal development if you're someone that struggles with confidence then you need to be working on that if you're someone that struggles with time management work on it if you struggle with you know belief in yourself you need to work on that and that's where the personal development is so key i always have personal development going i use audible i have podcasts there's so much stuff on this phone and I have it in my ear all the time. I drive around with it. I work out. I put my workouts on. I mute it. And I've got this going. And I, um, as a mom, I'm always in the car. And yeah, I've got my kids in there, you know, and they're fighting or screaming or whatever. I just keep one earbud in and one earbud out and listen to my personal development. And that has been the big kicker for me because that's what motivates me. That's what helps me be a better person and a better coach a better mom and a better wife. So that is my story. Those are my points. Um, so make sure you've, you're intentional. You know who you're going to help. Number two, you've got to do the vitals. And number three, be coachable and really reflect on yourself. Um, so I told you about how I was before. So I'm going to share really quick about what my life looks like now. Um, my um, Now, I well, I've been at my goal weight for a long time now. Um, I've had three C-sections. You can go look on my page and see I wasn't the cute little pregnant girl. I was the big, huge pregnant girl who um, gained 55 pounds, 50 and 60 with my last one who just turned six. In fact, when I posted the baby bump photo on Sunday to, as a throwback, people were like, oh my gosh, it doesn't look like you. It doesn't. I was such a different person back then. And then, um, my, I thought my abs, like I never, like I'd been skinny, but I never had abs. Um, but I had been skinny. Um, and then after those three babies and all that weight gain, thought there is no way these abs are going to come back. I'm going to ever get abs, but I did. And I did at age 35. I'm 38 now. Um, best shape ever. I, you know, I do all sorts of fitness challenges. I've competed in fitness bikini competitions. I've done crazy, crazy fitness things. I used to hate to run. I run all the time now. I love it. It's my therapy. Um, I eat very, very clean. Um, I'm probably 90-10. Um, and 
because of that and um, you know, because of doing that, I've come off of a lot of medications. I had IBS really bad. I probably get one flare up a year now. Um, and I attribute that to eating clean on Shakeology. Um, that's been my experience. And um, I used to take um, anxiety meds. I haven't taken those in several years. Um, I believe that has to do with eating clean, exercising, and having um, personal development, to be honest with you. And because I've learned coping skills. The, um, my husband and I, like, um, I retired my husband 18 months into the business. Um, so he, reti he retired from his crazy job. And so he's able to be home with us, but he um, didn't care for being a stay-at-home dad. He loves his kids, but he went and started a business too. So he's doing his passion. Uh, I work no more than 20 hours a week. Um, I'm just very, you know, very intentional with what I do and try to um, make sure that I use my time wisely. And um, because of that, I mean, honestly, you guys, just the simple things I've shared with you, I've hit elite three times, um, 2013, 14, and 15. I nine star in my first business ever center, but I actually have 11 diamonds in there. They're just uneven. Um, I have three star in my second, and my third is about to go one star. And uh, I'm nothing special. I just focus on the vitals and honestly, the things that I shared with you. That's it. That's all I've done. Um, Success Club um, is a non-negotiable for me every month. And I'm just, I make sure that I, I look at it as I'm helping five people. I need, I want to help five people because I know how good I felt after I, you know, started drinking Shakeology, working out, and got plugged into a positive community. And I want that so badly for other people. Um, that's my message. And that's who I look to help is those people that need me for that. Um, so if I can do it, anybody can do it, is my opinion. Um, so it's complete, Beachbody has completely, completely changed my life. Like it's, it's incredible. Uh, I can't even describe what it has done for myself and for my family and um, my kids are extremely um they're older now and i'm really thankful they're very confident in who they are and they're very confident in what they look like um, and that's been important to me and it's cool that i've been in the business for five years so i can actually see the fruits of my labor um, they don't struggle with um the things that i struggled with at their ages um, in fact, they often I hear their friends struggling and they actually um, help them and help them believe in who they are in themselves. Like my son plays, I talked about this a little bit before the call started competitive soccer and, you know, he's really been a light for other kids on his team. Um, so uh, I know I'm talking fast, but I want to get this information to you. So takeaways from leadership. Do you want me to go over those? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. There's not very many because it was super simple, you guys, and all of the, um, I mean, there is a lot, but I always like to take my top things. So don't get into management mode, um, especially when you get into leadership. Um, and that's something you need to be important. And that's important. You, being a leader means that you're doing the vital behaviors and you're not trying to manage other people. Um, I always tell my team, you're not, a, you know, you're not like a CEO and these are all your, your coaches aren't your employees. They're equals. So make sure you treat them as such. Um, basics, do your challenge groups. You've got to run challenge groups. I can't believe how many coaches don't run challenge groups and don't do a beach body workout program. Um, you need to be doing a program and drinking your shake and focus on helping people get results. Now, some people aren't ready and that's okay. Let them know you're going to be there to help them, but help the people that are ready, build their belief in themselves and really believe in that box. You guys, that challenge pack box is so crucial. Um, and make sure you're an example of it. And then um, don't look for the perfect system. They said that a lot. Focus on the fundamentals, like, and being duplicatable. And you can do that by doing your vital behaviors. Um, you know, make sure that you're doing all four that I went over. 
And if they're not, if it's not working for some reason, then just tweak it. Like it's usually in the invite and follow up process is usually where I find it is, or you're not working on the right personal, you're not working on the right personal development. Those are usually where I see coaches that they struggle is because they're not, you know, they're distracted on one of those two things um, or they're off building like the perfect training or something like that. So, um, you don't need any of that. I started with no training. Jesse, like, you know, was just like, okay, I'm doing this. She was a new coach. I'm like, all right, how do we do it? And we just went out and invited people. I'm not kidding you guys. It was not like, we always joke. We're like, if we could do it, anybody can. <laughs> so, all right. Those are, those were my top um, takeaways from leadership. They just kept it really simple. Fundamentals and focusing on the vitals. That is awesome, Tanya. Thank you so, so much. I have like so many notes here and a couple things I want to make sure you guys heard in this. I, I heard her say intentional many, many times. And I feel like that is, is so important because it's so easy to, to not be intentional, right? To just sort of like throw shit at a wall and be like, I hope something works, you know? Or, or yeah, I'm working, but I'm scrolling Facebook or, you know, I'm, I'm spending an hour on pretty pictures and you're not being intentional on, on business building activities. And also what she emphasized a lot, she's intentional on who she's looking for. And you guys realize who she's looking for was who she was when she signed up, right? That's who she's looking for. That's who she's talking to. And that hasn't changed in four years. You know, she's not trying to help everybody. She's not trying to speak to everybody. She's trying to help who she was before. And so always remembering where you started from, where you came from, and trying to help those people. And also the emphasis on the vital behaviors. You know, I remember thinking that in the beginning, I'll admit this is a new coach. I was like, really? This is how you do it? And I was sort of waiting for the big reveal. Like, I'm, you know, like six months down the road, they're going to be like, okay, now this is what it's about. You know, like I had a really hard time believing that these simple behaviors every day could lead to a business like Tanya is talking about, could retire your husband. Like what, what wife retires her husband? You know, like <laughs> what world is that? And, but it's so True. And I feel like even more from corporate now, like they're really trying to get that message out to everybody. And I'm sure that's why they really emphasize it at leadership with the leaders that it is the vital behaviors. It is the simple everyday activities that build your business. But it's like they talk about in the slight edge, right? It's very easy to just go a little bit off this way and not do it, right? It's really easy to not do those things because they seem so simple. But here you have Tanya, who's been an incredibly, is an incredibly successful coach, has built an amazing business. And she's not lying here, you know, she's not like holding the back, like, oh, I'm not going to really tell them what I do. No, it's the vital behaviors every single day. And it's being intentional, like she said. And, and not prejudging people, right? Like, she said many times too, I didn't look like the image of a perfect coach, but Jesse talked to me anyways, you know, like we can't, it's amazing if you see like really successful coaches right now, like sometimes I think of like Amy Silverman, right? If you saw her before a picture, would you look at her and thought rock star, like CEO business builder? Probably not. Cause she was, you know, like kind of a druggy bartender. So you don't pre-qualify people because you never know who's going to totally be a rock star. So thank you so much for sharing that. I don't want to keep talking. I want to um, unmute everybody and see if anybody has questions. Everybody is unmuted. If you have any questions for Tanya. Oh, I did have one really quick. So I'll go first. <laughs> Let you guys think about that. Um, how did you trans, like, change your mindset around money? Like, how did you go from where you were in the beginning when it was, I mean, having to call, like, I just imagine calling hospitals and having to, like, figure out your balance and, like, that, it seems like there would have been a lot of stress around, associated with money. Like, how did you 
transition your mindset in regards to finances? Um, well, I was actually really afraid to have money again because we had had, if you have that money, you have responsibility, which means you can screw it up. And it's really hard to screw things up when you're poor because you're already poor. Um, and mind you, I went from, I grew up really, really poor, made good money and then lost it all. Um, and so I actually had to do, I mean, personal development and believe that I was deserving and worthy again. And then also, I am very like purpose driven. And I just made this business all about my message. Like I literally my accountant was like, um, told my husband, your wife's hobby business actually um, is making a really good income and we need to switch her to a corporation. So um, I just really focused on people like who in being intentional of who I wanted to help and what my mission was. And I believe that when you work in your purpose, the money will follow. And that's, that was my experience. And that's what I did. And I didn't like look at the dollars each week. Um, I know it's important to you, but um, I would just be like thankful. I remember even getting my first $30 check and being like, Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. And then I remember when I hit six figures and then I about passed out. Um, and it's just been like, it's just more, I just had to switch to focus on that. And, um, and what, um, you know, and that I was worthy and deserving of making money because I was obviously, I felt like, you know, I lost it before. Why, why should I deserve to make anything else? Mm. But yeah, it was a long one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? We just have three minutes left. So I want to make sure you guys can ask. Nope. <laughs> Jordan, Jennifer, anything you want to add or ask? Um, I guess, uh, do you invite people to coaching just from challenge groups or do you straight up ask, you know, straight to the coach opportunity as well? Are you both? Um, it depends where they are in their journey. Um, and so I vet them, to be honest with you. Um, I talk to them. And um, some people don't know they're going to be a coach, but they're, they're going to be one um, because I am so intentional. Like Alicia said, intent, that's like my word um, <laughs> intentional about who I'm looking for. Um, I've always been a quality over quantity person. Uh, so I, um, some of them are ready to go and then some need to have that belief. Though. So I'll put them in a challenge group, build up their belief, build up their confidence and then convert them to coaches but some already have it. Some are like, some are like me. They're like, I need to coach because that's the only way I'm going to stick with my program. So it just really depends. I find inviting people straight to the business opportunity and they have no desire to use the product is not good. Those are not the people I'm looking for. <laughs> they don't have belief and it's not, this is not a get rich quick scheme. Um, you got to put in work. So if they don't have that desire, um, the belief behind the product, I, I don't work with them. Awesome. Jennifer, did you have any questions? Or I think it's Sydney on the phone as well. We have like a minute. <laughs> yeah, really quickly. Do you use multiple platforms like social media platforms? Or are you just strictly Facebook? Or I built my business on Facebook. Um, I'm old school. My son calls it mom book. Um, <laughs> I branched out to Instagram, trying to figure it out. Um, I don't use that, and that's pretty much it. I've built mostly on Facebook, and I am the person that will talk to people in the Starbucks line or at the produce section. I don't care. I'll talk to people. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> 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 All right, we're about to get cut off, so I just want to end it. And thank you, Tanya, so much for taking your time out of your day. I really, really appreciate you got you getting on and hearing from you. Thank you, everybody, and I'll post the recording in the team page. Yay, thank you so much. It's always good to see you, Tanya. Yeah, thank you.